in the simplest mechanics questions, the forces are either perpendicular to each other or parallel to each other, which makes it easy either to add or subtract forces if they act in the same or opposite directions, and to use Pythagoras to determine a resultant force when they act perpendicularly to each other. Now, what's far more realistic is forces that act at various angles to each other, as we've got in this example over here. We've got a 100 kilogram object that is being pulled or attempting to be pulled with a 300 newton force to the left and then an applied force that is being applied at an angle of 40 degrees to the horizontal with a value or magnitude of 700 newtons. Now since these forces are not exactly opposite to each other or exactly perpendicular to each other we cannot simply add them or use Pythagoras. What becomes important for us to do here is to resolve the force into its components. And the way that we do that is we can redraw this applied force over here and we can show that this applied force has two components, meaning two forces that make it up. Those two forces are the force, the part of that applied force that is pulling it parallel to the surface and we can call that if a parallel, also sometimes referred to as FAX because it is acting in the X direction. And then the other force which we can draw is the component of the applied force that is acting vertically upwards or perpendicular to the surface, FA perpendicular. We can also see since we are allowed to redraw these forces wherever we want, this FA perpendicular could also be drawn there and FA parallel could also be drawn there, either way, the result is the same. We can now use trigonometry to find the values for those respective forces. And we can say that since we know that sine of theta is equal to the opposite side of the triangle over the hypotenuse, in this case that is Fa perpendicular over Fa, which can be rewritten as Fa perpendicular is equal to Fa sine of theta. We can then substitute those values that we have here. If A was given as 700 newtons and theta was given as 40 degrees, which means that the component of A that is lifting this object upward is 449.95 newtons and that is an upward force. In the same way, we can calculate if a parallel by saying that since that is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, if a parallel, the component of A that acts parallel to the surface is equal to if a cos of theta, in this case that is 700 cos of 40, which is 536.23 newtons and that is acting to the right. Now that we have resolved this vector into components, we can now easily compare because we can now look and see that there are only two forces acting horizontally. There is, we can say that it is the net force horizontal or parallel is also an option. And we can say that that is equal to the force pulling it to the right. In this case, that is FA parallel minus the force pulling it to the left, which is tension and we can calculate the net horizontal force and see that that is 536.23 newtons that is acting to the right minus the 300 newtons acting to the left. So there is a net force of 236.23 newtons acting towards the right. We can then use that in determining whether or not it can overcome friction. But before we do that, we need to first determine what the normal force acting on this object is. Once again, this object is clearly not being lifted off the surface or sinking into the surface, which means that our net vertical force, also known as the net perpendicular force, or the net Y force, must be equal to the force of gravity that is pulling this object downward, minus the two forces that are essentially lifting or pushing the object upwards, those being the normal force and the perpendicular component of the applied force, so our net vertical force, Fg, 
minus the normal force minus our FA perpendicular and we can rewrite that to find that our normal force is equal to our force of gravity minus FA perpendicular in this case the force of gravity mass times gravity 980 minus the perpendicular applied force 449.95 which then gives us a net vertical force of 530.05 newtons upwards. So once we have that we can now use it to calculate our frictional force. So as you can see it is important to resolve forces into components so that they can be compared by either being exactly equal or exactly in opposite directions to each other.